Uh, hi, <clears throat> uh, my name is Aaron Muir, um, and uh, my collaborator Anthony Scopatz is here. I work at uh, the University of South Carolina. I'm a researcher there, and I'm going to be talking to you about uh, SymPy code generation. Um, so to start, um, SymPy uh, is a uh, computer algebra system for Python. Um, it's open source BSD license. Um, it's uh, usable as a library, which is uh, very important for this application. And it, um, we just a few months ago released a 1.0 version. Um, and so just to give you a, a flavor of SymPy, um, SymPy is symbolic mathematics. Um, so for example, here um, we have uh, a symbolic integral. Um, and then we symbolically evaluate that integral. Um, and here another example, we have a, a not some nonlinear system of equations and we have a, um, a symbolic solution. So SymPy can do a whole range of uh, symbolic mathematics like this. Um, and so what does code generation mean um, in terms of SymPy? And basically it means taking one of these SymPy expressions and translating it to uh, some other language. Um, and so the example here, uh, we have the expression, the absolute value of sine of pi times x. Um, and so we're gonna, we take that expression uh, here, the SymPy version of that expression, and um, this function C code will convert it into C. Um, so you can see here the, uh, the absolute value in C is f abs and uh, this uh, m underscore pi for the pi constant in C. Um, and so this sort of thing is in SymPy uh, supported by uh, several languages. C and Fortran are the, the main ones, but we also support uh, MATLAB and Octave um, uh, co-generating directly to Python, um, which basically means NumPy and SciPy, uh, Julia, Mathematica, JavaScript, LLVM, Rust, and Theano. And it's uh, designed to be very easy to extend to other languages. Um, so this is the basic workflow for uh, using code generation uh, with SymPy. You, uh, you start by sort of driving your formulas for whatever it is you're modeling uh, symbolically using SymPy. Um, and you do that uh, basically in a very mathematical way. Uh, then SymPy converts those expressions down to some numeric function. Um, that's the code generation. And then you use that numeric function to actually evaluate um, your problem. And so um, for this code generation, there's basically uh, a few different levels of abstraction depending on how much you want SymPy to do for you. Um, the very uh, basic level is, um, like I already showed, you can convert some expression into just to the other language, into C. Um, the next level of abstraction would be actually generating a full block of code, maybe like a full function or a full uh, file that you uh, would then compile. And then the final level of abstraction would be actually um, generating the code that compiles down to a Python callable and then automatically importing that. And so um, if you've ever used uh, Lambdafy or Ufunkify, those are both examples of doing this uh, in SymPy. And I'll show this. Um, and so the main question that I hope to answer here is uh, why would you want to do this? Um, and there are uh, four big takeaways. Um, the first one is that SymPy is a mathematical a uh, symbolic mathematics system. So it can deal with the mathematics in a very high level way. Um, and for example, uh, it can take symbolic derivatives. It can uh, symbolically solve things. It can symbolically uh, um, simplify expressions. Um, uh, the second one is that uh, by using SymPy, uh, you can avoid a lot of mistakes that might come from just sort of writing all these equations down in code by hand because, um, uh, you know, it turns out that computers are, uh, are very good at, at not doing things like dropping signs or uh, you know, making stupid math mistakes, which uh, tend to be the, sort of the hardest sorts of things to debug um, if you make them because you, know, you, just, you just get a, a wrong answer. Um, but you know, computers are great at, at not making the sort of stu stupid mistakes that humans make all the time when doing mathematics. Um, uh, the third one is that uh, computers are also great at, at dealing with things that are way larger than what humans like to do. So you can deal with expressions that are pages and pages long, uh, code that you would never be able to write by hand. Um, but uh, 
it's easy to do um, if you can generate the, the mathematics in a high level way and then uh, code generate it. And uh, finally, there, um, this opens up the possibility of doing some these mathematical optimizations because um, uh, uh, you know, SymPy knows mathematics. It, it knows how to simplify things mathematically or uh, solve equations mathematically. And so uh, just to give you a, a little uh, toy example here, um, and uh, I'm going to actually switch to the notebook for this. Um, oh, uh, actually, hold on. I'm not quite ready. To... So iodine-131 is a, a radioactive material. It has a half-life of about eight days. Um, and this is, uh, this is useful um, because the... Uh, uh, the thyroid absorbs iodine, so if you have uh, something like uh, thyroid cancer, uh, you um, take some iodine, and uh, the radioactive iodine-131 uh, destroys the iodine cells, and then because the half-life is eight days, uh, a few weeks later, uh, all the iodine, the radioactive iodine, um, is gone. So here's the, uh, here's the basic um, decay. Uh, iodine decays into xenon-131 and xenon-131 metastable, which itself decays into xenon-131. And this uh, radioactive decay is described by these uh, relatively simple uh, first-order differential equations, um, which is nice because we can um, solve first-order differential equations symbolically. And so uh, here I've, um, in SymPy, I've uh, created some symbols. I've got some, uh, some data here, like the half-life of iodine. Um, and uh, now I'm, I'm creating these uh, differential equations. So this is the, this is the high-level mathematics. Um, basically, uh, this uh, formula here uh, for these th uh, three radioactive species. Um, and now SymPy. Um, can solve differential equations, uh, first order differential equations. So here's the symbolic solution. Uh, here's that same solution with the data um, inserted into it. Um, and now we can take the solution, which is what we need to actually uh, um, determine how much uh, of these different species exist at a given time and generate C code for it. Um, and so now, say, um, I start with uh, um, one unit of iodine-131, um, and so here I'm using ufunkify, which is basically doing this internally, um, the C, generating the C code and um, creating a numpy ufunk and then importing it um, here, and so I can use that to create this Python callback, and we can see after, uh, um, after about a month or so, um, you know, all but about 10% of the iodine is gone. The iodine, the radioactive iodine. And so this is a really simple example because iodine-131 is, is really nice because it only decays into three different things. Um, but if you take something that decays into hundreds of different species, the, this becomes much, much more complicated. And it's not the sort of thing that you uh, necessarily want to write out by hand. Um, um, because the, um, it just, it's just too much. And so by sim with SymPy, we can avoid um, the mistakes that uh, come with sort of trying to do that by hand by just representing this in a high-level way and, and generating the, the code. And so for my second example, um, I'd like to thank Jason Moore for helping me with this. Um, uh, we have an, uh, it's the N-link pendulum on a cart with PyDi. So first, PyDi is a library that uses SymPy to uh, um, do multi-body dynamics. Um, and so SymPy is used to generate the equation of equations of motion. Um, and multi-body dynamics basically just means uh, Newton's third law. Um, so the, the equations of motion are these uh, very nonlinear ODEs, um, basically corresponding to F equals MA. And these need to be integrated. Um, and the code generation lets, allows us to uh, create very fast code to do this um, by compiling down to C or Fortran. Um, and it, it's important for this code to be fast um, because if you want to do like real-time simulation of some model, then um, obviously to be real-time, you need to be performant. Um, and also for uh, optimal control, 
uh, basically you need to evaluate these, uh, these ODEs many times um, in order for the uh, optimizer to work. And then also um, uh, these systems can be very stiff sometimes, which requires uh, uh, many time steps. And so this is the, uh, this is the uh, thing that, the example here, um, we have uh, n pendulums on a little cart that moves uh, horizontally. Um, and then we have a, we can uh, place a force on the cart to go horizontally. And so our, uh, our parameters are the, uh, the distance of the cart and the angles of the pendulum and also the, um, the uh, uh, velocities of the, uh, the angular velocities of the pendulum. And so uh, pi di has a nice little function that uh, generates the equations of motion for this problem. And so um, here I'm starting with n equals three, so there's three links here. Um, and I'm starting uh, all the uh, all the pendulums straight up right, and then I'm I'm going to just give it a little uh, a little bump on the cart, just going to tap it a little bit. Um, so this is what the equations of motion look like for this. Uh, here we have the the mass matrix and then and the forcing matrix, and then I'm simplifying. I'm using trig simp to simplify those. So uh, I don't know if you can see here on the right, for instance, we have like a a negative sine Q2 cosine Q3 plus sine Q3 cosine Q2. And that simplifies, there's a trig identity that simplifies to just sine of Q2 minus Q3. Um, and so you can imagine it's obviously significantly faster to evaluate sine of X minus Y versus sine of X cosine Y minus sine Y cosine X. Um, and so this can make it, this trig simplification can make a significant difference um, here. And, and um, with these dynamic, uh, systems, you, you tend to have a lot of angles and lots of trig functions. And so this uh, trig sim simplification can help a lot. Um, and so here, let me, uh, let me actually switch over to, uh, and so PyDi is using uh, generating code and using Cython to integrate. And uh, um, here's, the, here's the actual code that it's generated, uh, SymPy, it's using some, uh, SymPy uh, common sub-expression elimination, so that's why we have all these variables here. Um, but this is this is the end the end result here. And so, uh, um, so we took you know we took like I said uh, all three pendulums straight up and then a little bump, and you can see that um, as you may know any any time you have more than just a very simple pendulum, it's a chaotic system. Um, and here's a little animation of what this looks like. And so now the really cool thing is, uh, you know, the model lets us put a force on this cart and we can actually um, uh, control the pendulum. Um, so here's a, here's a linearized controller, which means um, it, we're assuming that the, the pendulums are gonna start near the upright position. Um, and so this linearization is basically taking a, like a first order uh, Taylor approximation, which means we're doing a lot of symbolic derivatives, and uh, the expressions get, you know, every time you take a derivative, the expressions just get more and more compli complicated. Um, and so now, instead of starting with all the uh, the uh, pendulums upright, I'm going to take the bottommost one, and instead of pi over 2, I have pi times 0.55. Um, and uh, um, here's the positions. You can see that it's working. Here's an animation. And uh, in case you're skeptical, um, this is actually possible. This is a, a robot that somebody built that is uh, <laughs> controlling these pendulums. Um, and so now uh, n was a parameter here. What happens if we increase n, say double it, n equals six? You can see the equations get out of hand. And this is still a relatively simple uh, system, you can imagine if you're modeling something, um, for example, uh, um, this is pi di is used to model things like bicycles or the human body. The equations are just enormous. Um, it's not possible to write them out by hand. Um, and so the, really the only option is to do code generation. Um, here's uh, the six link pendulum. And uh, if you want to know more about this specific problem, here's a link. So uh, how does code generation work? Um, 
SymPy expressions are represented as trees. So here's x squared plus xy. This is represented internally. Um, the topmost expression is an addition. Um, and then we have a, a power of x and 2 and a, a multiplication of x and y. And so um, every single expression in SymPy is, is represented as this, as this expression tree. If you, wanna, if you use SymPy and you want to dig into this, you can use the dot args attribute. So here the, the args of this topmost expression are the, the power and the multiplication, x squared and x times y. And if we take the x squared, the args of that are x and 2. Um, and so because we have this nice tree structure, we can use these tree algorithms to sort of uh, do things. So here's an example of uh, part of the uh, C code printer in SymPy uh, um, for, the, for printing uh, rational numbers uh, and the constants E and pi. Um, and so basically, you define, you uh, subclass this code printer and define these methods for the, diff the various functions that you want to print. Um, and then it'll use the uh, visitor pattern to walk the expression tree and generate the, uh, um, translate the expression into the language that you're um, printing. And because of this, it's very easy to either write your own printer for your own language or take an existing printer and um, you just have to subclass it and add your own methods if you want to, if you have some function you want to print that um, it doesn't know about. Um, Here's some other, a few other libraries that are, uh, that use code generation. Um, one of them is uh, um, using chemicals, chemical kinetics. Um, the other one is doing robotics. Uh, I just want to show that uh, code generation is a very uh, wide uh, range of disciplines that it can be applied to. Basically, any, any domain where you, uh, um, you can express your problem mathematically um, it, you can apply code generation. And so uh, to reiterate the takeaways here, um, SymPy, you, uh, it, SymPy deals with things in a very high level way. Um, so symbolic derivatives is probably the most common thing that people do with it, but it can do tons and tons of mathematics um, beyond that. It's actually very powerful as a computer algebra system. Um, code generation or using a computer algebra system in general um, helps you avoid mistakes that would otherwise come from trying to do the mathematics by hand. Um, and additionally, you can deal with expressions that are um, extremely large and unwieldy. Um, and finally, these mathematical optimizations um, such as uh, trigon trigonometric simplification, um, there's common sub-expression elimination are possible. Some of these are like trig simplification, for instance, um, is something that a, a normal compiler is not going to be able to do um, because, you know, it's, it's very mathematical in nature. Um, we're very interested in, in hearing um, more about the, uh, if, you're, if you're using code generation or if you want to use code generation. Um, we're actively working on it, so we want to hear from you. Uh, um, this is our mailing list. Um, I'm on Twitter. Uh, this is the code. Um, and we will be at the sprints, or at least I'll be at the sprints. Um, and so uh, come find me. Oh, sorry, yes. Oh, so is it possible with SymPy 1.0 to take LaTeX expression or mathematical expression and turn it into SymPy code? So um, that's something that we're uh, working on. Um, there, is a, there is a project separate from SymPy called, uh, I think, LaTeX to SymPy, um, which has a, a LaTeX parser um, to SymPy. Um, and we have, I think we have a very rudimentary Mathematica parser, but it's, it's something that we, uh, we're definitely uh, uh, need to improve that. Um. Uh, really great talk, Aaron. Um, so, so some of your mathematical optimization, your algebraic simplification, I can imagine cases where that would not be uh, a good choice because CPUs are good at different kinds of math. Is there any thought on making simplifications that take into account CPU architectures? Um, so what, what, what would be an example? Do you, or, uh, sorry, 
if you can do a fuse multiply add, oh, that's going to be faster. Yeah. Well, so SymPy, um, you know, the, all the simplifications in SymPy are, are basically rewriting expressions. So um, simplification itself is, is a very loosely defined term. Uh, what does it mean for one mathematical expression to be simpler than another one that, that are both mathematically equivalent? So um, it's very possible to write uh, a custom simplifier that simplif the simpler in this case means simpler for execution on a CPU. Um, but it, like in general, simplify and simpy roughly means fewer operations, which generally translates to faster. So I think a little more important than performance would be um, round off error. Like how much does it know about floating point and round off error? Right. So that's that is one issue when you when you represent your formulas in a high level way, um, high level mathematics are not floating point mathematics. Um, so, you know, it's going to be making assumptions that um, aren't going to be true if you have, you know, these weird floating point things that can happen. Um, and so it is one thing that, that um, I, I don't think Simpy um, can do now, but it, uh, would, I'd be interested in seeing more of his sort of rewriting expressions to avoid uh, floating point error. Um, which is um, if something that uh, I think would help a lot. So you mentioned at the beginning of the talk that uh, SymPy can generate LLVM code. Does that just mean that it generates LLVM IR, or can you use SymPy as a JIT? Uh, so there's this is actually a very new feature. There's yeah, that's basically a um, an, a code printer that's uh, I think it's I don't, I don't think it's generating the IR. I think it's just using LLVM Pi to uh, to um, uh, basically uh, generate the callback. Um, and also you can, uh, the other thing that you can do is uh, using Lambdafy, um, which is also technically code generation. Lambdafy takes a SymPy expression and converts it to a uh, Python NumPy callback and you can use numba.jit on that. Um, and that's often um, a very easy way to create a very fast um, numeric callback for a SymPy expression. Is SymPy able to express higher order logical functions as well, or just straight? Yeah, so SymPy, SymPy does have a, a logic module. Um, I don't know if it's the code, the current code generation stuff, um, maybe not necessarily tuned for logic operations, although logic is important for code because you have these, uh, you, know, you can have branching conditions and things like that. Uh, but yeah, SymPy has tons of features, which I didn't even mention in this talk, and uh, Logic is one of them. So uh, this isn't a question per se, it's more of a plug. So we're gonna have a meeting right after this talk in this room uh, about trying to get sort of a broad range of disciplines and uh, you know, uh, people represented and users uh, and try to find funding for this kind of co-generation activity in SymPy. So if you're interested at all in that and interested in participating, um, and in particular if you're at a U.S. academic institution, uh, <laughs> uh, we'd love for you to come talk to us. Thanks. We have time for one more question. So this is long lines of uh, round off there. For instance, even on the quadratic equations, there's a couple of ways of expressing the root. Mm -hmm. uh, one is more stable numerically than the other. I was wondering if you have any, I expect you're probably thinking about that. I wonder how much work you've done on it. So yeah, that's, that's like the sort of thing that um, we don't necessarily have much now, but I would like to see more. I'm, I'm actually, I don't know, like is there is there like a generic way, like a generic algorithm to sort of rewrite expressions to be more nu numerically stable, um, or because if, if there is, then that's good because that's something that we can implement. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, but yeah, that's because um, I know I, like I, I've seen this quadratic equation like y y the way that you write it numerically is is very different from the way that you would write it in any other
context, um, mathematical context. Um, but that's definitely that's definitely the sort of thing that we, we want to do more of. Thank you. 